The Boston Celtics get Marcus Smart back, Al Horford back, and their groove back with a blowout win over the Miami Heat in Game 2. I'm going to talk about it. Let's celebrate right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your daily routine and your first listen every day. Show is free for you Monday through Friday and bonus podcasts whenever the Celtics play during the playoffs. So Saturday night game, no problem. I'll be there post game for you as well from the TD Garden. But today I am here at the FTX Arena, which you can see behind me. Uh, I have climbed to a great perch up here. This is where the, uh, I think this is where the ESPN broadcast was doing their halftime show or something, but I'm kind of like posted up here. This is really nice with that uh, court behind me. Even though I'm a little dark, you don't need to see my face. That's fine. Seeing my faces, I don't even know how the, the YouTube page has gotten this popular, but I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars. I was one of the media voters for the 75th anniversary Celtics team. Celtics blow the doors off of the Miami Heat 127 to 102 127 102 later on I'll talk about the defense and then I'll get into some of the individual stuff but let's just get into this right off the bat the Celtics started off slow and I think this is kind of going to get lost a little bit as we get through the whole celebration of game 2 and the Celtics being back and all that the Celtics were down 18 to 8 in this game and not looking great they were defensively they were making mistakes they they were still doing some of the things that they had been doing wrong earlier um they, they were still a little too low in the drop which i talked about with tom Westerholm in yesterday's podcast they were still dropping a little too far and they were still you know play, playing just not quite sharp he may calls a timeout it kind of resets everybody and then after they're down 18 to 8 they had a couple of shots. Jason Tatum gets his second foul. And the Celtics have done this before. In fact, this game is kind of like a repeat of the Milwaukee series where Jason Tatum gets into foul trouble. And the Celtics, instead of instead of folding, instead of letting things kind of get out of control, we saw this, what was it, game six, game seven of the, of the Buck series where the Celtics kind of, it was the third quarter, and they they just kind of held Milwaukee off until Tatum could come back and close the door. But in this game, Tatum goes and sits on the bench. The The Heat were still kind of, you know, they, they were feeling themselves a little bit. They, they were hitting a bunch of shots. It's not like they weren't, it's not like they were just flat out missing, even though they missed. Uh, they were 10 of 34 from three. But early on, it seemed, seemed like they were making plenty of shots. The Celtics go on a run. After, after it was 18-8, they finish the quarter 35-24. So they put up, what, what's that, 27-6 to six was the run. They were up 35-24 after one. Just... Six straight three-pointers and a couple of free throws in there. That's one of the turning points in the game. Early on, you've got the, the Celtics maybe not looking great, and all of a sudden, three-pointer falls, three-pointer falls. Grant Williams checks in. They go five out, and it's Jalen Brown. It's Grant. It's just three-pointer after three-pointer after three-pointer. And you can see each one fall, and, and the, the kind of the – Miami just starting to deflate a little bit. And the Celtics come out in the second quarter and do it again. 35 points in the second quarter, 35-21. And this time, the defense, that, that was maybe their best defensive quarter. The Celtics 
put together a 70 to 45 first half and they they played literally even in the second half <laughs> 26 points apiece in the third quarter 31 points apiece in the fourth quarter for a 25 point win that's basically kind of how you want that to go uh but that second quarter was just a dominant dominant defensive quarter and again that offense flowing off of the turnovers they had the Celtics had 20 points off of 15 Miami turnovers they won that points off of turnover battle by 11 big big deal there um the first half the difference in the game in the first half was literally the difference between the made three pointers the Celtics had an 18 point advantage there and the difference between the made free throws which the Celtics had a 7 point advantage there so they were up 25 at the halftime because literally they made three pointers and they made free throws. The shots were falling. Now this is a make miss league, right? This is the the whole thing. And, and first of all, good, good for hitting your free throws because the Celtics free throws have been an issue. They finished 21 of 23 from the line. So that's good. Nice to see them starting to fall a little bit again. Tatum was perfect. He hit seven. Jalen hit two. Marcus hit three. Grant was seven of eight. Grant was the only one who missed. Uh, actually, no, Jawan Morgan missed as well um so the Celtics missed two Jawan Morgan missed one in uh garbage time but I wasn't I was trying to write my game story at that point once garbage time hits I'm just like okay I'm typing you guys figure it out figure out what the final score is I'm trying to type I'm trying to get on out of here so that that first half was was enough uh after the Celtics and this is this is how I thought this series was going to go so far if you read my preview on Boston Sports Journal I said specifically, I thought game one was going to go to Miami because, by the way, I might be saying Milwaukee. I might be interchanging the two. I'm sorry if I've been doing that. I thought game one was going to go to Miami because that they they were going to be, they were going to feel disrespected. They were going to feel like, hey, why why is everybody just like anointing Boston? What What are you doing? We're the number one seed. That they'd come out with a little bit of an edge. I said this yesterday, um, not as much of an edge as I thought, but they they still came out and, the, and they had that big third quarter, obviously. And then the national narrative was going to be like, oh, wait, don't write off the heat just yet. And I literally wrote on Boston Sports Journal in my preview before game one, then Boston's going to come in and lay the hammer down in game two. I just knew that they were going to respond in game two in a big, big way. This was it. This is exactly the type of game I expected. They are are not going to sit there and just, first of all, they don't lose two games in a row anymore. I mean, they might, but they will at some point. They have to, I think, but they just, they don't anymore right now. They haven't in a game that Marcus Smart's played in forever. And they're, they're just, so I knew that they were going to respond in that way. By the way, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is uh, has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. So I knew the Celtics were going to respond because, first of all, they don't lose two in a row. Second of all, that's that's kind of what they do as far as they respond to adversity, and that's who this team is now. It's it may not feel like that's who this team is, but that's or, or you know if you still have like that PTSD from the beginning of the season, but we've got to get it through our heads. This is who this team is now. They respond to adversity. They were feeling the adversity. Now, I didn't think Smart and Horford were going to be out. I still don't know what the hell happened with Horford. He said after the game, I was feeling a little off. I felt like I should get tested. He got tested. He tested. Clearly, he tested positive. That's that. He never said he did, but clearly he did. And then they kept testing him, and he tested negative. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know if it was a false positive. I don't know if it was a positive from like the last day and maybe he had it for a week and then this was the end. Whatever it is, he tested out. He had two negative tests before the game and it was allowed to play. So he that he tested out of protocols pretty quickly. Smart came back from the sprained midfoot. He looked fine. You could tell in the pregame he was moving fine. And that, that set the Celtics up for uh, just a great start to this game, the great first half, and a great defensive first half. Defensively, 
a lot of the, a lot of the talk is going to be wow they shot 20 of 40 and they were 50% and they shot 51% from the the field and their true shooting percentage is going to be off the charts cuz they shot 90 91% from the line they they they're, they're just going to be uh, it's going to be outrageous offensive numbers from the Celtics and Marcus Smart had this great game nearly get a triple double and it's all offense 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 and then usually when the Celtics are blowing teams out it's an offense Defense was the big thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the defense when I come back because I think the, the the defense was elite, and for the first time in a while, we've seen we, we got we got the band back together. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. First, let's talk about Built Bar and Built Puffs. Built has now brownie batter puffs. Okay, if you love brownies, who doesn't love brownies, right? Then you get brownie batter. And so we just did the birthday cake puffs, and now you got brownie batter puffs. Basically, the the uh, marshmallow that is covered in chocolate. Uh, if you could imagine licking the spatula clean off, the, you know, when when mom made the brownies, or when you could be you, could be dad. You know, just, it was always mom for me. Uh, Bill has this new creation that's better than ever: brownie batter puff. That takes protein bars to a whole new level, and they're available right now at Built.com. 140 calories. Only 140 calories. 17 grams of protein and only 7 grams of sugar in a brownie batter puff. This is like candy. This is sweets. This is going to satisfy your sweet tooth without having to eat 250 calorie whatever and tons of sugar and all of that stuff. And they're covered in 100% chocolate. They're great. So you can maintain a healthy lifestyle and have the stuff that you want to have with Built. Uh, you can use it as a meal replacement. You can use it as a, something to help you when you come out of the gym to get the protein into your body. However you want to use it, go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15, LOCKED, L-O-C-K-E-D, LOCKED15. It gets you 15% off your order, and it works every single time. So try one of these. Try something else. Maybe you go to Built.com and you find something different that you like. Give it a shot. Every time you go back, you can use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at Built.com. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. How about making Locked On NBA Big Board, uh, NBA Draft Big Board, I should say, uh, your second listen, Locked On NBA Draft Big Board, is hosted by Rafael Barlow, who is on top of these prospects. You don't even realize how thorough he is, how good he is. You've got to listen to the podcast. If you're into the draft at all, if you have questions at all, scroll through the feed. They'll be answered. I guarantee you he's on top of everything. He's so good. He's so knowledgeable. One of the true assets of the network. So check out the uh, NBA Draft Big Board wherever you get your podcasts. Celtics in this one held the Miami Heat to 21 points in the second quarter and and. 45 points in the first half overall. So this elite defense was back. And for the first time, because of injuries, we haven't had the luxury of seeing Smart at the point guard, Horford fully healthy, and Rob fully healthy all together with the Jays on either side of them. It's been a long time since we've seen these guys at full strength. Rob had the meniscus surgery and came back during the Brooklyn series. Wasn't really himself fully yet to start the Buck series. Then he gets the bone bruise. Smart misses a game in the Buck series. Horford misses in Horford and Smart miss game one. We really haven't seen in the playoffs the whole group together at full capacity. Now in this game, we saw it and we saw what this elite defense could do. And really, you saw, let's start with Marcus Smart. Not just the steals, but the individual defense, the individual effort on Jimmy Butler. There was one possession. It ended, unfortunately, it ended with uh, Bam Adebayo putting back a an offensive rebound. The Celtics still giving up too many offensive rebounds, by the way. They gave up 12 in this one. They only had eight. So they gave up 12, and they gave up 12 second-chance points. Still too many, but if we want to nitpick, but the, the effort that Smart put in on that particular play, and it's tweeted out everywhere, the, 
going under screens on Jimmy Butler, which you can do because obviously if you want him to shoot a three-pointer, go ahead. Go ahead, Jimmy. You can do it. Uh, remember after game one, he was like, I was 0 for 2, but I want to be 0 for 0 because I want to go, you know, whatever. I want to run into people in the paint. Well, he was 1 for 3, so he still took three pointers. Three three pointers. Uh, so if he went in and said, I wanted to be 0 for 0, and then he still said, well, there's these three three pointers that I just got to take, then that's a win for the Celtics defense because they were able to uh, bait him into taking shots. The Celtics want him to take. He was 11 of 18, and he had a great run in the third quarter to cut the lead to 17. That's where Marcus Smart strikes again. And the play of the game, the absolute play of the game. Jimmy is going off in the third quarter, just doing a Jimmy Butler thing, right? Playing great. And Smart comes in. Jimmy Butler gets the ball to Bam out of bio. Smart strips at a bio. It goes down as a block shot because, as I've said before on the podcast, when a guy catches it and he's going up and the ball's even at his waist, they consider that going up for the shot. So when you slap down, that becomes a block shot. So Marcus Smart had three steals and one block shot, but really it was four steals. And that one on Bam, he ends up going the other way. And then he drops Max Struess with a poor Max Struess. Uh, and this wasn't like a fake one. This wasn't a push off. This wasn't a, oh, he tripped on my foot or stepped on his foot. This was a legit Max Drews just got dropped by the dribble move. And Smart said, oh, okay. Stepped into a nice rhythm, three, a uh, uh, free throw line jumper. And it went from 17 to 19. Miami calls a timeout, 224 left. And this, I tweeted this out. Jimmy Butler had been making his, his move, his run, and with about two and a half minutes to go, this is like decision time. The Celtics had the lead up to 25. 17-point lead is still a big lead, but in today's NBA, with a couple minutes to go in the third, that was danger time. That play was so huge because it's, it stopped that momentum. The Celtics needed a stop, so it's, it flipped the momentum into at least it slowed Miami down. Again, clutch plays that don't happen in the fourth quarter. This Marcus Smart was the the clutch play of the game in a 25 point game. This was it right here. Smart gets the stop. They call the timeout, and then Boston comes out, and it's all part of a 12-2 run. I want to say where the Celtics get it back up to 25 or 12-4 run to get it back up to 25. So basically Jimmy Butler worked his ass off to get nowhere, running uphill in sand, and that's exhausting. That was a huge play from Smart. Um, and to me, that, that, that imagine this game where with everything that had happened and Butler coming out of that timeout or if Marcus Smart doesn't make that play, let's say he doesn't make that play. Bam has it in the middle of the lane. It's a layup. It's a 15-point game. Then Ime is the one who calls the timeout. Now you have two and a half minutes or so where if Miami has the momentum and they, they hit a three or hit something, if the, if the lead is down below 15 heading into the fourth quarter, we've seen the Celtics blow 14-point lead in the fourth quarter in the playoffs. We've seen it. It's nothing. 15 points. You come out, you hit a couple of three-pointers, it's a six-point game. You know, or a nine-point game, I should say. You score six points, it's nine points. Uh, it's a nine-point game. You're down below 10. So that play, forcing Miami to call a timeout, giving Boston the momentum, having everybody going, ooh, with the, with the, the Struess dropping them, like, even people in Miami are like, oh, no. It's like slow motion, like, no. It was fun. Um, huge, huge play. And Rob, Robert Williams, three block shots. But more importantly with Rob, it's I, I saw him deter guys from even driving. You know, he blocked Caleb Martin, I think it was, um, 
on a corner three pointer. Caleb thinks he gets the switch. He makes a little jab step, you know, jab step, step back. I got, I got room. I'm just gonna create myself a little space. I'm gonna launch a three pointer over this big oaf. Uh uh-uh. uh. Rob stays with him and he's got those pogo sticks for legs. Bing, block shot. Uh, and he kept it in bounds. Celtics kept it. So, Rob, once you see that, you start to, in, especially when he's in the right right position, because he was a little too low early on. Um, when he's in the right spot and he's able to defend and force force a guy to be like, do I do I drive here? I feel like I can drive him. No, maybe I should shoot. And, and just that little indecisiveness of what do I do here with Rob? What, what Can he get to this shot if I take it or not? At that point, you've won the battle because it's just not flowing for the other team. And it's all about the flow. For you know, It's just catch, shoot, catch, make the pass, catch, dribble. It's that .5 that, that Ime wants to play, right? It's just quick decisions and, and go. And if or, – or, or I say Ime wants to play – that that's the best basketball. And if the other team's not doing it, if the other team's just kind of like indecisive and Rob, just by being Rob and being on the floor and being in the right spot does that, then that that's a defensive win. And then now Horford in there just doing Al Horford stuff, you know, being a solid dude. Uh, he had, uh, he was perfect from the floor, a steal a block, uh, three assists, like having Rob, Having Al, having Smart, such a big difference. And then you can mix it up because that's what the Celtics have done all year. You play some with Horford out there. You play some with Rob out there. You've got Grant and gives you a different dynamic. But you mix things up, and the Celtics did a great job. Switching, not switching, fighting through things. Um, I thought defensively we saw a Celtics team we saw the dominant defensive Celtics team, the the regular season best defensive team in the league. We saw them in this game, uh, game two. Individual performances, there were a few. They were all good. They were all good. Um, so I'll talk about that when I come back. First, I got to talk to you about Bet Online, the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You can find the latest odds, news, developments through the playoffs, through Major League Baseball, fights, even next season's NFL futures. Uh, I did not check what the what the odds are for game three. But you know what? While we're, while we're here, let me just check it out. I'm going to guess it's Boston by five. Let me see if the, that line is out yet. Because that makes sense. It's been about right for the Celtics uh, so far. But as I navigate Ben Online... To get these, you can check out the, oh, it's Boston by six. So there you go. I was right. Close. Bet online, your continued source for all your sports wagering information. Live betting, you could have bet on the second half of this game. You could have bet on the second quarter of this game. So check it out. Esports, you can bet on that too. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device. Bet online is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. How about making Locked On NBA your second listen, Locked On NBA? I host Locked On NBA on Wednesdays when the Celtics aren't playing on a Tuesday night, but uh, I host on Wednesdays with Jake Madison. So add Locked On NBA to your your list of podcasts. Add it to your rotation. It exists wherever you found this podcast. It's also on YouTube, so check it out. Um, so this was a familiar formula. We saw the Celtics... Remember after the last game, I said game one against the Bucs was worse. Game two against the Bucs was a blowout. Game one here was not great. Game two, a blowout. Now let's see if the Celtics can learn some lessons and go home and just take care of home court. That's all I want now from the Celtics. I'm not asking too much. All I want is go home, protect your home floor, however you need to do it. And end this thing in six. It's exactly what I said from the beginning. It's exactly what I think is going to happen. Come out game three. And game three, unless something else happens, 
I think Derek White might might play because Derek White missed the um, missed the game for the birth of his son. Hendricks James White was born uh, at some point here on May nineteenth, twenty twenty two. So happy literal birthday to Hendricks, the second Hendricks uh, on this team. Robert Williams had a son. Hendrix earlier this year. So popular name. People like the name Hendrix. Maybe it's Jim, you know, Jimi Hendrix fans. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll, we'll ask. We'll, I'll ask. Why not? Uh, um, so if Derek's back, then that adds just one other element here because if Derek, if Derek White comes back and now you have him that you can throw out there for Marcus Smart, you're adding just another defensive element. Uh, but it doesn't mean, you know, look, Peyton Pritchard, did fine in this game and you know with with the Miami Heat with some of the matchups they can throw out there you can play Peyton Pritchard he was a game high plus 39 how how is that possible plus 39 for him plus 37 for Grant Williams who like I said was just huge in the beginning uh he was just getting thrown around man that dude bumps bruises he he hit the deck hard but he did a great job. Five of seven, two of two from three, seven of eight from the line. A 19 point game for him. Uh, used up his fouls. Uh, I thought he did a generally good job uh, off the bench. Tatum, I mean, you go down the list, Tatum was was good. Every, everybody was good in this game. Tatum was good. Eight of 13, 27 points. Horford was good. He was perfect. Robert Williams was good. Offensively, not much, but the Celtics did miss him. A couple of times. There are a couple of roles when he's down the middle and the Celtics just miss him. And look, I'm not going to complain about it in a 25-point game, but but you can't miss those because you got to be able to see them when it's a five-point game. Like that's something you, you just want to get in the habit of doing everything just right all the time. And I say get in the habit. Celtics are three wins away from the NBA Finals. You're, you're out of time to, to get into habits. But you still want to, like when you see a guy roll like Rob, just get him the ball. First of all, it's the right play. Second of all, rewards him for some of the other stuff that he's doing. The guy is busting his ass on the, on the defensive end. Reward him with a couple of lobs. But again, not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But I, I just still want to see him if he's if he's down the middle and he's open, reward him. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown did a great job. You know that that first quarter, like I said before, Tatum goes out with the foul trouble, and Jalen comes in, and Jalen anchors things. He bookended that first quarter with three pointers. Uh, he had one bad stretch where uh, I think it was the beginning of the third quarter, but other than that, he's still a very efficient night. Nine of seventeen, four of seven from three. Um, eight rebounds, three assists. So just one turnover. Celtics took care of the ball. I mean, that's the other thing. They took care of the ball. They had nine turnovers in this in this game. Just, just nine. Um, three for Tatum, three for Horford. One apiece for Rob, Jalen, and Marcus Smart. The bench had zero turnovers. Even in garbage time, no turnovers. Um. They did a great job. They just did a great, if you're if you're protecting the ball, what I say, what I say in yesterday's podcast, it was very simple, very simple. When we say don't panic, just fix a couple of things, protect the ball, don't turn it over, just just don't turn it over quite as much, execute a little better in the half court. That's what they did. That's a, you can boil it down to that. You defended at your normal level, which is elite. They protected the ball. They only had nine points off of well, it was ten turnovers, I guess, when you count like. An offensive foul in there, or something. Um, one of them was a team turnover. Oh, that was the uh, shot clock violation at the end of the game. Um, protect the ball. You only give up nine points off of turnovers when you score twenty points off of their turnovers. It's big. You execute in the half court. The one thing that I'm worried about in in going into game three, and I'll wrap it up with this: just don't don't come out of game three thinking. Hey man, we're the best shooting team in the world because we shot fifty percent in this in from three in this game. Like I think there's a tendency from the Celtics to say, "Hey, we shot awesome. Let's uh, let's come out and just shoot early three pointers." 
Uh, Marcus Smart did that a little, a little too much. The first quarter was not great for him, but he settled into the game afterwards, and the shot, shots started to fall. I don't want the Celtics to say, hey, we're, we're great, and come out in the first quarter of game three and fall behind by you know double digits again. You just don't want to do that because I, I feel like Jimmy Butler is the type of guy that he's going to feed off of the road energy. Right, like he's just you don't want to you don't want to tempt that kind of fate. You just don't. So, um, what they did in this game is they they generated a lot of their great looks, like twenty eight assists, twenty eight assists on forty three made baskets. Twenty eight assists is a monster number. Um, again, twelve for Smart, three for Jalen, three for Horford, five for for Tatum. Really spread the ball around. That's how you're supposed to do this. Really worked the ball around. You had they had good shots. There, there's one Peyton Pritchard three early on that really stood out because the Celtics passed up a couple of shots. And I, I think it was a Jalen Brown assist. He drove, drew a ton of attention, got it out to Pritchard. Pritchard had like a lot of time to find the laces. He was just like, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, I'm just gonna whoop, nails it. Beautiful. Work the ball around, work your offense, pass, ball movement, player movement. They had a couple of nice cuts in this game that, that ended up with uh, buckets. So play the game the right way. Things are going to go well. This Celtics team is too damn good when they are playing the right way. And when they are not playing the right way, the lesson is simple. You're terrible when you don't play the right way. You have the potential to be very bad. And that third quarter in game one was not playing the right way, and that's how bad they can look. There's, there's really a wide swath between the Celtics playing poorly and the Celtics playing great. Celtics playing together, playing the right way, that's a championship-level team. What we saw in the first half of this game, playing the right way, that, that team can win a championship. When they play the wrong way, get smoked and and if they if they do it again in this series they'll get smoked again in this series so come out in game three protect your home court play the right way protect the ball keep doing what you're doing satisfy the home crowd come back to come back to miami up three one come back to miami up three one it's a very simple task very well, i mean i say simple it's not simple. Miami is a very good team. It's very, very possible that Miami could win. But protect home court, and you get a 3-1 lead. And 3-1 leads are hard to overcome. I will be back uh, after game three. So Friday is a travel day. Celtics are off. I am off. I am taking Friday to travel back to Boston. I will do some writing for Boston Sports Journal. So you can read me there. But the next podcast, since this is the Friday podcast, next next podcast will come after Saturday night's Game 3. I will be in the TD Garden. So uh, hopefully I have a cool backdrop there. Well, Bruin season is over, so there would be no reason for me not to. So uh, podcasting from the Garden and uh, hopefully after a win. So subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you are a subscriber, you know whether it's the podcast, whether it's YouTube channel, which we're getting close to 6,200. The goal is 6,500, 500 per series. So trying to get to 6,500 by the time the Celtics wrap up this Miami Heat series. And uh, hopefully we can bump that up because I'm fully confident that the Celtics are getting to the NBA Finals. So subscribe. If you are a subscriber, share the podcast. Tell your friends, tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.